all living things require energy, some to varying degrees. Glucose is a common source of chemical energy for cells of living things, although it is not directly used as glucose. The energy is transferred to other compounds, such as ATP, before it can be used by a cell. Energy releasing reactions that break down compounds such as glucose and transfer the energy into ATP are termed cellular respiration reactions, or sometimes just simply respiration. Cellular respiration occurs all the time in all living things humans, animals, plants, fungi, etc. As glucose, the chemical energy in it is released, and a proportion of this is harvested and captured in ATP molecules. The process of energy transfer from glucose to ATP is not 100% efficient. Some energy is lost to the system and converted to heat energy. Cellular respiration, in general, is 40% efficient. That means 40% of all the energy in glucose is transferred to ATP and is available for use by a cell. There are two types of cellular respiration. One is aerobic respiration. This is respiration that occurs in the presence of oxygen and it is termed aerobic respiration. In the presence of oxygen, glucose is broken down into carbon dioxide and water. There are three stages to aerobic respiration. The first, glycolysis, occurs right here in the cytosol of cells. Glycolysis literally means sugar breakdown, which is exactly what happens here. One glucose, six carbons, is broken down to two pyruvate, three carbons, plus two ATP. Two ATP are produced from the net release of energy in glucose breakdown. Also during glycolysis, the hydrogens are removed from glucose as well as their electrons. These hydrogens and their electrons are collected by what are called acceptor molecules. Such a molecule is NAD, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. As NAD collects the hydrogens with electrons, it is converted to NADH, and is now called a loaded acceptor molecule. Another is FAD, flavin adenine dinucleotide, which when collects hydrogens and their electrons, turns to FADH2. So, in summary, Glycolysis turns glucose to two pyruvate molecules and two NADH molecules. The ATP yield of glycolysis is two ATP. The second stage of cellular respiration is the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle occurs right here in the cell's powerhouse, the mitochondria. The reactions of the Krebs cycle occur in the highly folded inner membranes of the mitochondria, more specifically, in the matrix of the mitochondria. The Krebs cycle starts with the pyruvate from glycolysis. The pyruvate leaves the cytosol and enters the mitochondria. For every molecule of pyruvate formed in glycolysis, one molecule of carbon dioxide and one acetyl coenzyme A are formed in the Krebs cycle. As the cycle progresses, hydrogen atoms are gathered by the acceptor molecules, with a total of five loaded molecules being formed. 4 NADH, 1 FADH2. So, in summary, the Krebs cycle starts with pyruvate, which then goes to carbon dioxide. This gives a total of 8 NADH molecules and 2 FADH2 molecules. This gives a total of 12 hydrogen ions. The third stage of aerobic respiration is electron transport. Electron transport occurs on the inner membrane of the mitochondria. Compounds such as cytochromes, located on this inner membrane, are special proteins that act as electron carriers. During electron transport, electrons from loaded acceptors NADH and FADH2 are brought to the inner membrane of the mitochondria. The electrons are then transferred from one cytochrome to another and are finally accepted by an oxygen molecule. When oxygen accepts the electrons, it becomes negatively charged and then reacts with two hydrogen ions to become neutral, which is H2O, which is water. This diagram represents the electron transport. Loaded acceptors, NADH and FADH2, are transferring their electrons and hydrogen ions to the chain, which is the cytochromes. As the electrons are transferred down the chain, enough energy is released to produce two or three ATP molecules. Two electrons and two hydrogen ions react with O2- 
to form H2O, water. Therefore, an electron transport, which starts with six carbon dioxide molecules, goes to water and unloaded receptors, such as NAD and FAD. The ATP yield is 32 ATP. So, we have oxygen and glucose goes to carbon dioxide and water, and usable energy by the cell, which is our ATP. Now, I did mention there was two types of cellular respiration. The other is anaerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration is the chemical breakdown of glucose in the absence of oxygen. In humans, anaerobic respiration can occur as this. Glycolysis breaking down glucose as before. This results in the production of pyruvate, which is then converted to lactate molecules by an enzyme in that particular muscle. Each enzyme is specific to the muscle. If anaerobic respiration is undertaken for longer than 60 seconds in a human, lactate builds up in the muscles, the acidity rises, pain builds, and the muscle fatigue occurs. This will continue until the muscle can no longer contract as usual. When oxygen is reintroduced, the lactate is converted back to pyruvate and enters the Krebs cycle. The yeast also undergoes anaerobic respiration, producing alcohol and carbon dioxide thanks to its specific enzyme. The total energy yield is 2 ATP, which is considerably less than 32 in aerobic respiration. As the pyruvate and NADH goes to lactate and NAD, it can be seen that the H plus in NADH is consumed when turning pyruvate to lactate. This shows that the system of anaerobic respiration is unsustainable, as H pluses are needed in the production of ATP.